Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are just tuning in today, we are picking up in our series on worship. Uh, if you have never been here before, make sure you click subscribe, click that like button, leave us some comments. And helping me out with the, this series is Pastor Turner Schwartz, affectionately known as my son. I my, feel like I need a, like a tagline to say right there or something. Pastor Turner Schwartz. CYC or something goofy. <laughs> you know, I have a tagline for everything. Okay, so if you guys have a tagline for Pastor Turner Schwartz, put it in the comments. <laughs> Let we me wanna, know. We want to know what you want his tagline to be. It's kind of like BP Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or when we were doing our our Calvary videos during COVID, I ended every everything with Calvary Church. Wash your hands. And so everyone was like, wash your hands is your tagline. So. That's great. So give us a tagline for Turner so that he has something to say when I introduce him as Pastor Turner Schwartz. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about what is the cost of worship. So, so let me recap a little bit, just a nugget, because you're actually kind of bringing a little bit more of the message, a little bit more of the teaching today, which you guys are in for a treat. And um, But let's recap the message. We talked about what is worship. We took a look at the actual Hebrew and the Greek meaning of worship, which, which means to bow down, mm -hmm. to be prostrate, um, and to recognize um, a position and lower yourself, that you mm -hmm. are lower in a position. We took a look at several um, some of the first stories where we see the word worship used in the Old Testament. And we kind of concluded that worship... Um, looks like two things. It looks like a posture mm -hmm. of laying yourself low, humility. I don't even think we use that word, but yeah. it was obvious, humility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talked about how it requires sacrifice. Yep. I'm taking a look at the story of Abraham and Isaac and the worship that he called when he was called to, to go and, and sacrifice Isaac, that he called it worship. Yep. So um, that was good. considered worship. And that worship in the Old Testament was all about sacrifice. It was all about bloodshed. So those two elements, we're trying to really then t say, okay, where do we see worship in the Bible? And what does that look like for us? Notice the things we did not say worship was. It's not, it's music. not about music. Not about, it's not a genre of music. It's really not about emotion. Mm -mm. Yep. Um, it's, it can in include music and it can include emotion. Um, and I do believe it should evoke emotion, Sure. Um, but it's not about emotion. It's not about music. Um, and it's definitely not about experience. It's really bottom line. It's about the recognition of the position of the deity of God so good. and the response to the deity of God that I am, I am laid low and I'm willing to lay at the altar and sacrifice whatever you ask me to sacrifice. Mm. So tell me what you're bringing to me today. Yeah, so today uh, let's talk about this story found in uh, Mark 14, also found in Matthew uh, 26. Okay. Uh, let's read the story. Let's go. Uh, We're going to read to you. Yes. So hang in there, get your Bibles and follow along. So Mark 14, uh, verse 1 through 9 it uh, says, Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. And the chief priests and teachers of law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. So they're already getting ready to kill Jesus. Okay. This, this is, we're getting close. Setting the stage. This is what's happening. It's mm -hmm. tense. Yep, we're getting close. Um, but they decided not during the festival or the people may riot. <laughs> Good. He idea. says, uh, so verse 3, while he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper. So Jesus has got his feet kicked up. He's chilling. He's relaxing. Um, a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. So there's a lot here. So much. <laughs> so much culturally wrong yes. in this picture, which yes. we're going to get to. Yes. Okay, I love that you um, brought the story. So good. So broke the jar, poured the perfume on his head. Verse 4. Some of those present were saying indignantly, to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages in the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Which Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body before him to pre prepare for my bur burial. It's prophetic. 
<laughs> truly, I tell you. <laughs> he just had a revelation. Yeah, truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So, so cool. good. Gosh. It is a prophetic act. <laughs> it She's is. Prophetically, she sees what they don't see. Yep. Because they're so clouded, so blinded by religion, rituals, tradition. Yep. Ooh. And her, a- her act of, of pure worship is to bow, you know, to bless him, pour the oil, and then to bow at yes. his feet. Take that posture of worship. Yes. And that's her form of the most the most pure way I can do this without the fog machines, <laughs> without the lights. <laughs> you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, we're not against fog machines and we're not oh, against not by lights. Means. I use them on Wednesday They're nights. not worship. It's not worship, exactly. <laughs> and man, just if you really just strip this story down to just what it is, right? Like it's just it's just purity, which is so ironic because I love that. this I love that. this woman you know if it is who a lot of scholars say it is mary magdalene she was a prostitute right so Mm -hmm. it's so ironic that she has this such pure form of worship coming from such a defiled person Mm. i think it's so beautiful so good yeah so good and uh man i you know and i think of so many ways that we you know get all mixed up in these like i even know terms like worship wars right like we get so it's crazy mixed up in these selfish ambition. Well, I like the music this way, and I like the the preaching this way, and I like the the worship to look like this, and I like it to look like that. And dude, like God doesn't care about any you of better that. Better preach that <laughs> word. It's like <laughs> He's looking for the pure worshipers to rise up that worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah, that's what He and, tells the woman at the well. Yep, exactly, and that's what He's looking for. Is mm-hmm. who who's going to do that? And this woman just comes in and she lays down and pours that perfume and she shows all these men in the room. <laughs> you know, we can talk about that too. About- oh, she, she honestly, culturally, she she couldn't even enter the room. Yeah, exactly. Unless she was serving. Unless she would have been serving, which goes mm-hmm. to that Mary Martha story mm-hmm. where Mary goes in and begins to bow down and Martha's like, what, what, why is she getting, you know, she should yeah. be helping me serve. And it was indignant for Mary to come in and say, I'm not in here yeah. to serve any man. Mm-hmm. I am only here to worship my God. Yep, that's it. Man, it's so good. It is so good. Yeah. I, I want to talk in this moment, several things I want to talk about this. Yeah, let's One, let's talk about the response that they had to her, what I would call ridiculous, extravagant, extravagant what they would say would, was wasteful, yep. mm-hmm. um, audacious. And we call yeah. it audacious worship. He didn't yeah. preach a message on yeah. that. Audacious worship. Their response. Yeah. The Bible says that they responded indignantly. Yeah, and they rebuked her harshly, which, you know, I think we talked about this a little bit in our last video. Yeah. Just, I've been, you know, like just full on confession. I've been the person to rebuke someone before yeah. where I'm like, that looks weird or that, that seems crazy mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Right, but what's crazy is taking a year's worth of wages and dumping it on a man's Gosh, head. Yes. You know, that's that's crazy. Yes, it's supernatural. Yes, <laughs> I mean that's not normal. It is not normal. And we want to take worship and put it into these boxes of what we think is normal. Like this is how this should and look. and where we feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've exactly. made worship all about feel good. You know, I think it was uh, Pastor Rick Eubanks that showed the video years ago about the cruise ship versus the battleship. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's kind of like that. Like the cruise ship, we want a cruise ship experience. We want it to feel good. And we want mm-hmm. it to be pleasing. And we want to like the food. And we want to like the captain and his crew. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's like, no. The, the scriptures, the kingdom is all about warfare. Mm-hmm. And worship is all about warfare. I, we are going to have to do an episode oh, on yeah. worship being warfare. Oh, yeah. But it's so interesting how this was this was so unusual mm-hmm. and she was being judged for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's man, this like makes me feel like I need to repent for things that, that yeah. I've said or done, you know, and, and the way I've looked at other people and the way they worship. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, so good. Um I think it was I was listening to Jeremy Riddle do a talk one time at um at a local conference so jeremy riddle is like my favorite worship leader 
I know that dates me a little bit because now it's all about the Mav City music and stuff. But <laughs> we like Mav City. We music love too. Mav City. <laughs> but Jeremy Riddle is my guy, right? And he was talking about Stephanie Gretzinger when he first started leading worship with Stephanie and how terrible she was <laughs> as a singer. He was like, her her voice was bad. She was pitchy. She her you know and her voice kind of sound like a cheese grater a little bit like people just he just went on and on he said but man if she didn't love jesus more than anyone i've ever met in my whole life that's good and it comes out in her worship you know yes. and and eventually she grew and, and her voice evolved and adapted and and now she's the worship leader she is today but my golly we're talking about Stephanie Gretzinger, one of the all-time great worship leaders, in my opinion. You know, she was awful at the beginning, but man, she just loved Jesus, right? She had that that purity That's that good. this woman had, right? That's, That's like really all good. she had. She didn't have the voice. She didn't have the the platform. She didn't have all she but had. But she had the position, the position. of being bowed down, mm. and she had a life of sacrifice. Yep. Like, I'm willing to offer everything I have. Yep. Willing to offer everything I have to just honor you and serve you. Such a risk. Yeah. <laughs> worship worship is risky. Yeah. And and I just now I'm having this revelation, but like when oh, we yeah. take a look at all these different passages, first Kings in the way Elijah calls down the fire, Abraham being called to sacrifice his son, Peter and Silas worshiping in the jail cell, Mary versus Martha, the the woman here with the the flask of oil. All of these were risky. These were risky propositions. Oh, yeah. They entered into the risky zone. They were in the danger zone mm. in order to bow down and offer their lives to Christ. Mm. Of course, then there's Christ and himself in the ultimate act of worship. Right. Of laying down his life and the sacrifice yep. of his life, the ultimate blood shed. Mm. Um, so I, I love the risk here. But we see, and I love that you were willing to position yourself as I, I often tell people, like, we love the story of the prodigal son and we're willing to position ourselves as the prodigal, but we never want to position ourselves as the brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though sometimes we are the brother. Yeah. We're the oh, ones yeah. that are like, why are they back in church? You know, yeah. why are they, uh, you know, and yeah. we're like mad when they don't get justice. Yeah. <laughs> that they don't get what they deserve yeah. because of their sin. Yeah. That's the yeah. attitude of the brother. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I digress from that, but I love that you took on the passage and saying, like saying, like sometimes I'm I'm that those people. Yeah. Sometimes I'm the Pharisees. Yep. Um, you can speak in tongues and speak in gossip at the same time. Ooh. You know, I mean, that's what these. That's what these. This, sorry, that went a little deeper than I think I intended, but it's truth, right? Like it is it's truth. It's these. You know, these guys are literally in the presence of Jesus. The king yeah. of kings, the lord of lords, and they're here gossiping about a girl. <laughs> they're completely missing. Yeah. I was thinking about like the uh, the Simeon when he says, "Mine eyes have seen the glory of the Lord," and he recognized he recognized the work of the Lord while it was still in an infant stage, mm -hmm. right? So we think about Anna and Simeon who were in the presence in the temple, waiting on the presence of the Lord. And we assume we read this, we assume that Joseph and Mary brought this baby, and they were the only people in there. <laughs> But there were probably hundreds of people in the temple. Yeah. But only one person recognized the work of the Lord, and it was the people that were expecting and mm. watching for the work of God. Yep. And so I think about all the things that we miss because we're so distracted yeah. by what we think should be happening and shouldn't yeah. be happening, and we're too busy trying to navigate the and and <laughs> regulate. Yeah. yeah. Trying to regulate worship. <laughs> yep. And, you know, like, why, why are they doing that? You know, I can do some pretty funky things in worship. Yeah. And sometimes I'm aware of it. I'm like, why is my body doing that? Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes when the anointing comes on me, I get this this kind of shiver thing. Yeah. yeah, and the shakes. Yeah. And my right hand will shake sometimes, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, sometimes, like, my body will kind of do this. My head gets to bobbing. And when I'm out slain, sometimes I get to bouncing on the ground. And if I'm if I allow my mind to think, I'm like, Ooh, I bet probably some people probably think I'm going through deliverance. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm actually just feeling the energy of the spirit yeah. moving and imputing <laughs> power, right? But we have to be willing to say, look, I can't worry about what's on my right and my left, which goes mm -hmm. back to that some of us just need to be like yep. boom. Yep. That's you exactly know the story right. in Second Chronicles? Um, chapter 20 with King Jehoshaphat 
where he, uh, they're like, oh my gosh, all the the enemies coming after us, we're never going to make it, you know. And he, so he he consults with the prophet and the and says, what does the Lord have to say? And he says, you'll win this battle. Mm-hmm. And so the Bible says that he got on his face and he bowed before the Lord in worship, and all so all of Israel got on their face. And what an incredible! And when he got up, and the Bible says in the morning when he got up, yeah. Oh. So, yeah. So the Bible doesn't say, but we can assume, it's fair to assume that he he initiated and then activated worship throughout the entire nation, mm-hmm. that they were on their face. And in that place, the distraction of the enemy was totally dissipated mm. because he's on his face in worship, can no longer hear the voice of them. He can't see them on his right, can't see them on his left. And the Bible says that he got up in the morning, he got up. And he issued the praise and the worship, the praising band to be in the front lines, knowing that the battle had already been won yeah. before he even entered in. That is the power of worship. I yeah. should have kept that story for our war, <laughs> our warfare yeah. worship. But this is what this woman is like. So just like, I don't yeah. care what anybody thinks. Yep, it's so prophetic. So prophetic. I mean, she's she literally doesn't care. She no one else. In her eyes, no one else is in the room but Jesus. And the mysteries, the mysteries of the kingdom are being whispered into her ear. Mm-hmm. She, Like you said, she, it's so prophetic. She doesn't even, I don't know that she even knows it's prophetic. Mm-hmm. But the mysteries of the kingdom, she's being brought into an alignment with where the spirit mm-hmm. was moving in preparation for the burial of Jesus. Mm. And whether she knew it or she didn't know it, when we're surrendered to the Lord, we flow in to the rhythm of where the Spirit's at. And we begin to move in ways that are probably more prophetic than we even know. Yep, and things begin to get downloaded into us that Ugh. we're not going to... I mean, we, it may be years until mm-hmm. we see it come out, but it, you know, whatever that was could have been downloaded into me at a worship night back when I was 16, you know, and yeah, I'm on good. my face or so good. whatever. And it's things that are prophetically placed in us mm-hmm. through this act of surrender, of, of sacrifice, of being complete submission to Christ, of I'm on my face right now. And things that my natural are not aware of. And I, I can't be aware That's of it good. because it's it's so profound. It's so much greater yes. than me. And uh, and some things, things like if, that my natural are not aware of. Yeah, so and and it's things that um, like sometimes they're things that would would kill us if we knew, right? Because it's it's God, too it's too much. Um, or there's things that He's downloading in you as a you know. I think of a student. I tell yeah. my I tell my students this. There's things that in worship that He's putting in you to prepare you for something when you're when you're 35 and you're good. you know you're going through a, an argument in your marriage. Things that you don't even know, and and these, like you said, these mysteries of heaven that's being placed in her through this act of worship, it's the same for us when we mm-hmm. get on our faces mm-hmm. in front of Christ and we say, God, mm-hmm. you know, you, we we exalt Him, we praise Him, we're just on our face. The things that we're receiving, we don't even know. It's good. We don't even so know. So good. So good. I like to think of like, you know, we're living in this linear chronological time and space and place, mm. right? That God created for us to dwell within. So mm. when he, and so we're dwelling in there, but the spirit of God has, has imputed into that, but is also outside of that. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. when we get into this place of worship where we are completely, we come outside of this created space. Mm-hmm that God created for us to dwell within in the natural. And so we get to come out of that space and we get to see things from the heavenlies. We get a new perspective and a shift. And I do believe that's what's happening in this passage. And I love that you had that fresh revelation just right here going, this is (laughs) prophetic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and what's cool about the prophetic, you just mentioned the word perspective. Like in, in our lives, we sit in different, we like our entire lives are seen through certain perspectives right everything we Mm -hmm. see is through a lens Mm -hmm. and that's truer now in our culture than it's ever been Mm -hmm. before but we sit in this we sit in this seat of uh living in our past or we sit in this seat of living in our pain and our offense and we sit in this seat of living with our strongholds right what would it look like for us to get out of those seat get into a seat a posture of worship and to sit in a seat of the prophetic, it's like good. A, of a it's perspective of this. Mm-hmm. Sure, like I, 
I've been hurt by you, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit in that seat. I'm mm -hmm. going to sit in this seat over here where I'm going to see you prophetically That's good. from this perspective. That's very good. And I worship, worship is the bridge, right? Like worship is how we bridge from this seat of offense, this seat of past hurt, this, this seat that I'm sitting in, and it's bridged by worship to the other seat of so the good. perspective I of, love it. of I'm here on my face, and now mm -hmm. I can see you through a prophetic lens. Mm -hmm. And shameless plug, my book, Enforcing You, I talk about your core beliefs predetermine how you perceive what your perspective is and ultimately mm. the paradigm you'll walk in. Mm. That's, what the, that's the key phrase for the entire book is, is based on. Mm. When I talk about breakdown perspective, exactly what you're talking about, I talk about the third heaven, the yep, three heavens, yep, yep. right? So we, we reside here in the first heavens. The second heavens is where the battle and the spiritual warfare is. The third heavens is up here. We're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. That's what it mm. tells us in Ephesians and Colossians. So we're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. So if I recognize when I'm to be, the Bible says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Yeah. Right? That's what it says in James. So if I'm laid low, exactly what you're saying, I love that you said it, it becomes the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. if, if I'm laid low, that position, that posture becomes the the gateway yep. becomes the gateway to where I begin to see things from my actual real position in Christ. Yes, exactly. And when I'm seeing things, so it, when I'm down here and I'm looking left and right, everything is overwhelming. But when I'm seeing things this way, not only am I in my superior position, which mm -hmm. is having dominion upon the earth, that right. was the original creation. Mm -hmm. That's what we were designed for. Right. Not only am I over my circumstance, but I'm also over the warfare. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> there it is. Yep. There it is. So yeah. I'm like, talk about a, a superposition. Yeah. Yep. And, and, you know, tying it back to the, what does it cost to get there, right? Yeah. Like what, what is the cost? Yes, of, because that is the, the title words? of this episode. Yes. <laughs> the, you know, the cost is I have to give up, you know, like, like let's take it back to the seats we sit in. We're sitting in that pain, sitting in that offense, sitting in, oh, that person did this, sitting in this. And, dude, like, I get it. Hurt sucks. Pain sucks. And sometimes there are genuinely, like, things that people have done to us mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. not our fault. But the healing is our responsibility. That's good. Say that again. And Let's say that again. So the pain, the, the pain and the hurt is not your fault, but the healing is your responsibility. So good. So that's how we move from... from from that seat that we sit in into the seat that you're talking about, this this high seat is what does it cost? Well, we have to give up a, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of offense. We have to be willing to give up those things. A selfish to sit in ambition your super position. To sit in the seat that we have. And yeah. worship is the bridge to do that. It that's how you're gonna give it up. It's it's, it's the process by which you give up those things to get into the position I that you're talking that. about. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love. It. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start using that. I want. I'm gonna get my superposition. <laughs> I gotta get in yeah. my superposition, which is the yeah. holy of holies, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we talk about like getting through the tabernacle. There was a process that they had to go through. Yep. I want to talk in this um, passage. One of the other things that struck me was how they almost they tried to use ministry. They tried to put yeah. the <laughs> act of ministry over ministry to God. Yep. Yep. So busyness when i in my book again shameless plug to love and to be loved i talk about returning to your first love and i talked about i talk about the act of ministry and in the old testament the only role of the priest was to cultivate was to minister to god in the temple mm. so that the the presence of god could hover in the tabernacle yep. and then the presence of god is what ministered to the people mm. in the old testament you don't see the priests ministering to people they're only ministering to God. They're cultivating the presence of God in the atmosphere, in that mm -hmm. space. And then, the, and then they were relying, expecting, putting a demand on the presence of God mm -hmm. to minister to people. So I'm thinking about in this passage of how, how easy it is. Same thing with Mary and Martha. Martha's more concerned with ministering right. to the people while Mary's going, no, I just want to minister to God. And how easy it is for us to say that my worship to God is ministering to people. Now, I want to be careful here. 
<laughs> you're like, oh no, she's going to go there. <laughs> I want to be careful here because again, a lot of it goes back to that posture mm-hmm. and the attitude of your heart. But a lot of us use ministry, ministering to people. We think, we don't necessarily necessarily cognitively use it, but we think it's our ministry to people yep. that will activate our worship to God and mm-hmm. will activate our presence and our our intimacy with God, and it should be absolutely the reverse. I have opposite of that. It is our worship of God that's being put in that superposition that mm-hmm. should then cultivate, activate, compel us to minister to people. Yep. It's ministering out of the overflow. Yes, yes, <laughs> The yes. inflow of, of the Holy Spirit into us and in the indwelling and the, the ondwelling of mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit on us it's how we minister out of the it. overflow that yes. way. Because neither of us want to want to minister out of our own selfish ambition because it gets pretty <laughs> gets pretty ugly when that happens. Yeah, well, and again, like thinking about again, read my book to love and to be loved. I talk about the present, the candle and the the lampstand, and why it was important that they kept the the oil filled up, the lamp mm. filled up with oil and the wick trimmed. Mm -hmm. The wick represents our flesh and our soul. Yeah. And the burning and the saturation of the oil is the importance of keeping your flesh and your soul saturated in the Holy Ghost. So they had to keep the sacrifice, keep your flesh trimmed, keep yourself circumcised. Mm -hmm. It was a picture of the circumcision. What does it cost? Right. What does it cost you? You got to keep those things trimmed Mm -hmm. so that the so that a wick can burn just of the wick and it gets this big ugly black smoky flame. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> and it's easily snuffed out. Yep. Yeah. It's very easily snuffed. It's gone. Yep. But if you keep a wick trimmed and it forces the wick to burn, come on. Yep. If you keep your flesh trimmed, if you stay in a place of sacrifice and offering, then you are forced to burn from the oil of the Holy Ghost yep. and your flame will be pure, it will be brighter, and it is not easily snuffed out. Yep. Yep, that's exactly right. So good. Yeah. And, you know, it's, 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 I think we talked about this in our last, um, last video, but it's like the things that get purified by fire. Oh, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. they're on that altar, what are the, what are the things that, that matter? What are the things? And I feel like so, so much of the time we're just bringing so many things that don't matter. We're, we're carrying all these things into mm, worship with us. That, so good. That's like, why are we even carrying this? Mess? We're just, we go in. To the heaven, or we go into worship, worship in the first heavens, and we all we talk to God is about things in the first heavens. Yeah. <laughs> like we never get past our pain point and into yeah. the promise yeah. and into the presence. Yeah. Because we're so focused on the pain point and yeah. all the you know. Yeah. Oh, problems. What, what this person did to me four years ago, when it's like, you know, those are those yeah. are hard conversations, but at the same time, dude that person they don't even know your name like the healing is your responsibility you know back to that piece of it and i think often we're looking we're 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 waiting to get past that pain point Mm. to get into the presence and we don't recognize that it's the presence that will help you get past that pain point yeah it'll help help you do it right or or a lot of times we man, if I can just go to a little bit more therapy or if I can just get a little bit more at this, but ultimately it's your responsibility. Um, and that's a hard pill to, pill to swallow it for is. some people. Well, because some people um, are addicted to their own dysfunction, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't commiserate, right? Yes, yeah, so like, we, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I love that this kind of brings up, and I think that's a tricky spot. I think we, we, we are wise to ask ourselves on a regular basis, like, how is what I'm doing, first and foremost, an act of worship towards God? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, whether it's cleaning my child's dirty diaper, or whether it's working in the nursery, or whether it's being a youth leader at church, or whether it's playing that offensive line in yep. football. Like, <laughs> how is what, I, how can, because remember, worship is really about everything that I'm doing, I'm laid low before the Lord. Mm-hmm. And no matter how well or how not well I'm doing it, um, Every behavior, every performance, every measurement that comes into me and out of me is only because of God. Yeah. And so there's a continual recognition of God's presence in my life and a continual awe that I live in, whether it's I'm writing a book or I'm doing my dishes. Yep. But yep. I'm doing it heartily as unto the Lord. Yeah. That's so good. 
it's it's taking everything that we do in life and finding finding you know where is god worthy of my worship in in anything that i'm doing and the truth is he's always worthy of our worship you know the fact that you and i are even taking breaths right now Mm. is grace yes praise god and just because you and i are sitting here breathing right now he's worthy of our worship and, so and, and worthy of us getting down on our faces and, and giving it all to mm-hmm. him. And, you know, again, I think if sometimes we can pull people out of the perspective, the seat they're sitting in and pull them into a perspective like, Hey, let's look at your life from back here. You mm-hmm. know, let's zoom out mm-hmm. and look at all the things, you know, and, and yeah, this, this text message you got earlier, messed you up a little bit or maybe hey this this yeah. facebook comment on your your picture you didn't like it or whatever zoom out you know god's still on the throne yeah it's gonna be okay let's offer him our worship and and you know a lot of times i have to do that yeah you know when when i you know get a text that i don't like or have a phone call with a parent that doesn't go well or whatever i have to step back and and go all right god is still on the throne it's gonna be okay and i just need to worship <laughs> i just need yeah. to get on my face mm-hmm. because or else i'm gonna be in my own selfish ambition yeah and again when that happens it gets ugly mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't go well mm-hmm. so i was thinking about um in that the story of jesus when he bows down and he begins to draw in the yeah. sand and how there's kind of a holy pause there's a holy hush in that scene right mm-hmm. there you know this is this you know, the, the Bible says, or the, the, the law says that this woman was at, caught in the act of worship and the law says that she should be stoned, that she's worthy of death. Mm-hmm. But what say you? And there's this, there's this holy hush in that moment. And I, I've, because we, we talk about that, that say law moment where you're like, okay, I need to back up. Yeah. I need to get perspective. I believe that's what Jesus was doing in that moment where he's like, okay, I need to bow down. Mm. And he just begins to doodle in the sand. And, and scripture doesn't say what he was doing. What it was, but what we do know is he forced a holy pause. Yeah. Where I believe he recognized, look, at there is something so much bigger going on here than what yeah. everybody is focused on. Yeah. And he was trying to shift their perspective into the third heavens mm. and not just the circumstance yeah. of the moment. Gosh. And what would it look like if we were to, to implement those things, you know? In our in our lives, in our government, in our schools, in the in the way you know, to mm-hmm. just take a breath. Let me bow down. Mm-hmm. You know, That's good. let me put perspective on some things uh, before I respond to that text. Before That's good. I, good. you know, before I answer that that phone mm-hmm. call or get back to this person, let me do mm-hmm. this and get my perspective in the right place, mm-hmm. uh, so that this will go this will go better. It's good. It's good. I'm gonna give you a practical tip. Sure. to going with that. And I'm going to give you guys a practical tip. So today I was working with a client and sometimes we do this often and, and she was like, I struggle with just going from zero to 100 with my kids and mm-hmm. I just get explosive and I lack patience and everything else. And so we talked about the fruit of long suffering mm. and the gentleness, the fruit of spirit yeah. and how these are fruits. And so I told her to get a pack of gum and I said, I want you to write on the pack of gum on one side, the fruit of uh, gentleness and long suffering. Hmm. And I said, every time you begin to feel yourself starting to lose it, I want you to allow yourself to go and get a piece of gum. I want you to put that piece of gum in your mouth and I want you to savor the flavor. I want you to become aware of that flavor being released. And as that flavor, I'm, I'm was forcing her to, hmm. to have a holy pause. Yeah. As that flavor is being released in your mouth, I want you to really focus on how how that is how the spirit wants to release and loose the gentleness of the kingdom, the long suffering of the kingdom, that it's something that's already been done. And I think that is a form of worship. That is the power of worship is I, I'm going to bow down here and I'm going to loose the fragrant aroma of the kingdom. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to smell the love of my mm, God. Yeah. And I'm going to, and, and so I was thinking about the, the purinard and the perfume and the literally the fragrance that was released through this word through this woman and her act and our ability to shift the atmosphere like we can be you can be you can be i can be god says we have dominion of the earth and that means i have the dominion over the atmosphere that i'm in i can be in a hostile environment and if i choose 
to saturate myself in a moment in worship and begin to live in a response, speak in a response, people begin to see that, I can loose the aroma of the kingdom in the room. Mm, that's so good. So yeah. powerful. Yep. Gosh, that's so So good. we become, in some regard, the portal of the third mm. heavens here on earth. We are that intersection. Yeah. Because worship know? is the bridge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Mm. So we become, and I think that's what we see with Paul and Silas. Yeah. Right? When they yeah. begin to worship, it wasn't just their jail cells that were swung wide <laughs> open. Yeah. It was the entire, everybody was set free yeah. because of their praise and worship. Yep. So good stuff. Anything else about this passage? Oh, so much else, but we might need another... <laughs> Like, I, I think I'd close in saying this. I think it's so cool that, like, at the end, he says, wherever the gospel's preached, this woman's story is going to be told. You know, how cool is that? That, that is now, cool. because of this act of worship, her story is going to be discussed on YouTube 2010 years later. <laughs> right know? here. Yep. Right here. So, it's, man, it's so cool. All right, so we want to hear back from you guys. If you have a particular story that you want us to delve into, if you have a particular um, just question about worship, also don't forget his fun little tagline. Yeah, your, <laughs> let me know. Your DJ name, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I'm 48 and he's younger than yeah. I am. Um, but I think, I think I really want to kind of focus in on worship and warfare yeah I and agree. um and how we can use worship how worship is a weapon in our lives and in mm. the lives of those around us mm. so we're going to be discussing that in the next episode so make sure you hit that notification bell make sure you click like so many people watch these v date views and they don't hit like i don't understand why i don't i say it a million times like button. hit like hit that like button it hit costs like nothing <laughs> it costs not like nothing. worship it's free it's i'm not going to send you an email i promise you're not going to be hooked into anything just yeah. hit like yeah all right y'all so until the next episode remember enforcing purpose starts it starts with, with you, you.